Hello and welcome to Pocket Gamer Not Busy's YouTube channel. This is John Jordan and we're in our first time user experience playlist. So as you can see we've just fired up a game from Nexon um, and immediately it's asking us if we want push notifications. So this is a very bad thing here for, for two reasons. One, it's just, I think we can call it, this, this imp it's impolite. It's impolite for the first thing you do. There's a game, you might know a lot about it, you might not know anything about it. The first thing you get is, do you want push notifications? Now push not notifications are important for the developer. So push notifications are a good way, or potentially at least a good way, of bringing people back into the game, telling them stuff's going on in the game that they should uh, be excited about, come back into the game. But this little um, pop-up is actually uh, quite interesting. So this is, I'm playing on an iPad. This is the official um, iOS push notification prompt. And you can only trigger this once. So what you're seeing now with smarter developers <laughs> um, is that they will have an internal splash screen that will go something like, do you want to be notified when cool stuff's happening in the game? And it will have, it will say yes or not at the moment. You can show that internal game screen as many times as you like. So obviously people say, may not be a good time now or I want to play the game a bit more to see if I, if I enjoy it. They, they can, that, that screen can be refreshed, you know, multiple times. But this screen, this is the official screen, and Apple only let you show this prompt once. So if I say don't allow now, I don't have any other way of getting push notifications. So this is why it's a really bad thing to be doing this um, straight away. Because I'm going to go, don't allow, I don't know about this game. So so basically, the next one has now lost its chance to send me anything, any push notifications about this game. So in terms of retention, which is what everyone cares about, really poor. Okay, so this is not going very well at the moment. We had an error message there, I don't know what that was about. The first, Again, the first thing I see is... A purchase offer. So purchasing offers, retailing offers are great. This one, you'll get premium cards and free gems. But I've not even played the game yet. I, I can't believe anyone is going to click on this. It's really odd. Another odd thing, and this is a very Asian thing. So this game is developed in Korea, been very successful in Korea, I have to say. Um, if you look at the left-hand bottom left-hand corner, there's little tick things. Says, "Don't show me this again." Now, most people with advertising, particularly an advert, advert like this, which is not nice in, in any way, it's not, you know, there's no reason for you to see it again. Why would I want to see it again? It's kind of odd. So that this, the option for developers should be to only show it once a day. If people want to see it more, they can, you know, opt in. There's this kind of opt-in, opt-out situation with advertising, whether it's external advertising or in-game advertising. And developers, you know, the, the smallest thing, it's the first impressions, which is why we go through this quite convoluted first time user experience playlist thing because first time experiences really matter okay so Heroes of Incredible Tales is the game um, it's an Unreal 4 game so it's going to look nice the developer is um, Nat Games um, and the publisher is Nexon Korea as we said so again login um, so this is Okay, it's kind of kind of fine. I can log in through Facebook, Google, or, or just guest. So it's not too bad, I suppose. Let's go through guest, probably. To begin with. Um, so we've got this cutscene stuff, which I think personally is one that doesn't look very nice. And two, who cares about cutscenes? So we can skip that. And here we go. So we're starting. We, uh, we're seeing straight away. We're getting a bit of <laughs> some nonsense, Frederick. Um, We've got a very powered up figure. So this often happens in Asian RPGs where you start the game in a very advanced state. So it's obviously to encourage you to, if you keep playing this game, you'll get a character like this. But immediately what's gonna happen is we're gonna play as this character, we're gonna do a tiny bit of gameplay and then we're gonna have all this taken away from us, which again, I'm not terribly keen about. It's like, you know, be giving someone some toys and taking them away and say, well, you can, you can get them again if you wanna play for a long period of time. Not necessarily terribly holistic. But anyways, this is the tutorial so we can see Obviously, this is an RPG. It's got an arrow showing where to go. Not terribly keen on um, these um, kind of soft controls, but again, I mean, quite popular in Asian games. The game does have, when we get through the tutorial, there is an autoplay option, so you don't actually have to do any of this. You just the game itself, which again is very Asian, but that's an innovation which is happening now in lots of Western developed games. Um, having also play is pretty important um, for long-term retention. So people don't want to play. This is, this is a different kind of game from Diablo. This is not a kind of game where you care about the gameplay. I mean, I suppose in Diablo even, um, you care about the meta game and leveling up, which is always what RPGs have been about. So I'm blocking here, supposedly. 
can attack me. I'm learning all this stuff. I'm going to also play stuff. So I'm just going to zoom in through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the reason is, it's almost impossible for a game. You know, for some games now, people have been playing for mobile games for two, three years. You know, you don't, you don't really want to be going through just bashing minions. Oh, where am I going? Need an arrow now. Um, you know, you want to care about leveling up and, and getting new items and probably equipping magic and evolving stuff and too many enemies use a skill so let's see. Just pressing these buttons. Um, a bit. See, it's a, there's a timer on the buttons. Um, big, enormous attacks. There's the some big swords should be able to kill everything. Should Up the stairs we go. Probably gonna be a boss at some point. Okay, auto battle. So, so there we go. So now I'm into auto battle. So all that stuff it ta taught me before. I don't need to do anything. I guess I can press some of these superpower power up things if I want to. Um, here comes the boss. Then doesn't look very happy, does he? A bit constipated. Um, what do you do there? You just fight it. Now, okay, so it's now it's going to end. So that's the tutorial, or the cool bit of the tutorial. Again, I don't, what is all this? So now I can create a character. So I can have these the kind of classes, I suppose. So we've got enormous. He's got an enormous. Enormous is insufficient to describe his sword. <laughs> so he's like a melee. She's a healer. The magic mage thing. She. Um, he's dual swords. I guess he's more like a. Is he like a Valkyrie thing? I don't know. Um, she's, oh, maybe she's a Valkyrie one. She's got a side. Um, okay, let's go for the little magic one. Um, okay, set a nickname. Okay, please enter your nickname. Yeah, I've done that. This isn't going to be used. So, this is again a very odd thing. Um, particularly comes from Asian RPGs, I've noticed that you can only enter a certain amount of characters. Obviously, this is for, tends to happen because Asian. Um, Alphabet's different, so you tend to not to have so many. So ten characters in Chinese or Korean is is a lot, um, and they set up their. I assume this happens because they've set up their server um, to only allow this for Korea, and then they can't really go back and recode it. But it's annoying, you know. It's, there's no reason why you couldn't have twenty characters. Obviously, you don't want a hundred characters, but um, it's just a bit rubbish, really. And again, this is all because we're saying this is all the first time user experience. You know, anything like this is any friction in the system is immediately going to make me want to go and go. Oh, I'm going to uninstall it. Okay, so login. So we can see the daily login thing. This is now every free to play mobile game should have this. Pretty much all of them do. Um, so my day one login, I get some, some gold. Am I getting that? It's interesting, even again, I've not got it there, it's been sent to my inbox, so then I have to go to my inbox to get it. This seems a bit odd. We're going to go to another tutorial. This is the tutorial on the meta game, obviously. Or are we, no, we're going to go back into here. Gross farm. Okay, so we can see I'm none of that big monster stuff going on here. This is just small monster stuff. <laughs> Do the first mission, so I'm going to use up some energy. Um, oh, what's going on here? This isn't like. Okay, so a bit more think skippable stuff. So here, here I am. Um, where's my auto button? Oh, why can I not? Auto why can I hit your auto play? Can I hit the auto play? Is he doing anything? So off she goes. Do one of those and what it does. You can see at the moment those really cool attacks I had in the initial um, tutorial are blocked out until I get to level 10 and level 20. So that's not um, so enjoyable. Anyway, um, okay, there's a big spider. Change my power up. Bash, bash, bash. So, spider's dead. Get some loot. So that this is the like the gameplay. So this is why you want to also it. It's not particularly interesting. I mean, the monsters are nice and stuff, but what you care about is a Zephyr Wing and a Zephyr Wing. Okay. Um, I should have gone to the I've leveled up. Good. 
receive something in the main box. So let's okay. Equipment straight into the shop. Okay. Uh, Purchase a card. So card based um, system. Get an armor card. So I guess we're all kind of most RPGs now, most games. Um, even if they don't use cards, they're using like a card type system with rarities, so uncommon, common, rare, epic, whatever. Um, they're things you can, equipment you can attach and then you can level up using other cards. So whatever you, it's called a gacha system from the Japanese, where you basically randomly get getting, unlocking boxes of random stuff. That was quite nice, this stuff in the background, there's a little battle going in the background. Um, we, we randomly get um, different cards and you can then combine them. So whatever you get is useful, you're going to use it in some way. Um, even if it's not the direct thing you want. So good equipment, um, equipment button now. So I'm going to equip the stuff I got. Okay. Um, so that's a passion wave, whatever that is. Does these are. Um, should we equip it? Yeah, of course we shall. So again, the screen here is not great. I think the user ex user interface is a bit PC-like. Um, just not a bit too much going on. I mean, RPGs tend to be a bit like this. Asian RPGs tend to be very much like this. And this game has, is not a PC game at all, it's a mobile game, but it's, um, it's sometimes the issue you have, um, obviously Western games going to Asia don't seem hardcore enough or detailed enough, and Asian RPGs tend to seem a bit too geeky. So I've um, done that, you can see, um, yeah, you can see it's uh, uncommon, it's defensive, it reduces debuff duration by 0.5 of a percent, and reduces freeze duration by 1%. Not very powerful bit of equipment there. Um, so there I am. So it's kind of that's the power of uh, Unreal, isn't it? I suppose. With my new equipment on, there's a skill. What can I do into that? So um, I don't quite know. What do I do on that? Have I got any skill points? I've registered Flame Explosion. Don't know what that does. Um, okay, so you can see <laughs> I'm a bit lost here. What does that one button do? Don't know. Okay, so let's leave that alone. Oh, goodness me. So there we go. We've got this other don't show it again. No. <laughs> oh, and again, so that's three retailing things I've got. It's a bit silly. Um, so what am I actually doing now? So often you have other this problem with tutorials where it, it handholds you through everything and then it just drops you out and you're just like, oh, what do I do now? <laughs> I, mean, I suppose I go to the adventure bit, I suppose, do I? Let's try and do another one then. Um, oh, it's in there. what's this other thing? Oh, goodness. There's just a bit too much going on here, I think, at the early stages of the game, where I've not even done the second mission, so... Um, I can see there's some rewards I might get, I suppose. I can use up some of my energy. Off I go. I'm on water, so that's fine. Um, Ooh, firing. Magic, is it? Ooh, that's magic too. Oh, okay. So here's the boss, Chappy. Baddies around him. Oh, down he goes, up he goes again. I think there's a little bit of a problem with these RPGs, it's just the. However, kind of interesting they make the enemies, there's just. There's so many RPGs, with, there's just not enough kind of variation really in the enemies, they just become very. Particularly playing auto play, you might argue, but just become very cookie cutter, it doesn't really matter what they are, someone needs to kind of reinvent enemies. Um, so there we go, I've levelled up. Um, to level three, so that's good. Obviously, in the early stages of the game, I want to feel like I'm completing stuff. Am I used to combat now? I'm going to home. Okay, so this is where I'm going to learn about skills. Maybe that's where I could, why I couldn't do anything before. So I've got some skill points. Um, different. Okay. So I've got offensive wisdom, concentration, fatality. Okay, it looks like I'm pressing on offense. Press the passive effect. Oh, blue, blue, blue. Um, do you see the? Okay. So already I'm seeing this is going to be complicated. That's no, I mean, this is a bit too finicky for me, I have to say. 
Oh. I don't understand what that reset thing's about. So we can see, anyway, there's different skills I've got for different attack, defense, counter attack, um, or combo ones. Okay. Well, I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> um, this tends to be. I mean, I'm not trying to be particularly mean to this game. As I say, it's been very successful in, in Korea, it's been the top grossing game there for most of 2015 but sometimes this can be the problem for games that do particularly well in a particular environment they just become very honed to that audience um, which is not to say some games in Korea can't be popular in the rest of the world or certainly um, so there's lots of Korean games that have been popular elsewhere um, but the Korean audience tends to be a bit more like the Chinese and Japanese audience than the Western audience often particularly for RPGs um, so and you can understand why these are very complex games. So the developer um, does a bit of, you know, obviously localization, but doesn't really gut the game and rebuild it for the Western audience. And there's no reason necessarily that they should do that. The Korean market is a very big lucrative market, and maybe that's all they need to, um, you know, really be as successful there um, is enough. I seem to have lost the game. <laughs> I've got into some sort of. Um, but I do think that. Um, as just as the market becomes more competitive, um, the Asian developers are going to have to think a bit more seriously about how they deal with Western markets. Um, particularly in just, I think you can have a lot more depth. I think that's kind of something that we'll look to see for for Western developers to go into a lot more depth in their RPGs. But the way you introduce the depth is important, and to have all this stuff. Um, and I, you know, I wouldn't say I play a lot of um, Asian RPGs, but I have, I have started a lot of Asian RPGs and basically after about a week I just get confused about what's going on um, and that could be because I'm a bit thick but um, equally it's because there is a there is a, a, a high level of um, kind of requirement you have to be playing this pretty much all the time probably going on forums to work out what's going on um, uh, so yeah. So anyway, um, we'll see how it gets on. Um, thanks for watching uh, the video. So we do a lot of this um, first-time user experience stuff because it is the most important um, part of the game. As if any developers are watching, that's clearly what you should be um, getting your game out, watching how people play the first five minutes. You should be recording them. You should be. You, know, you have to get them through that first five minutes and get them having a good time and not confuse them and not give them push notification pop-ups the first thing they see. So um, <laughs> thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe um, if you want to see more of this stuff, we do a lot of first time experience um, uh, videos. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, hope to see you again soon.